Howdy folks, good day to you and welcome back. Glad you guys are here. We are working on a 2016 Jeep Wrangler Sahara Unlimited. This thing uh, was here for boatloads of service earlier this week and it's about ready to go home, but we can't let it leave just yet because we have missing nuts. See that right there? This right here is no good. That's 20% less clamping force on your wheel. We do not want to have that. So what we're gonna do in this quick video, we're gonna pull this wheel off of here. I'm gonna pull apart that brake assembly and I'm gonna show you guys how to replace a broken stud and lug nut. So stay tuned because this is gonna be a very good Jeep video. Okay, we will begin by removing the wheel and the lugs of nuts. That one's been recently replaced, gravity. I'm all about to fingers already. Okay. So we've only got one broken one, it appears. dealio with this. That's that's odd. The brake pattern does not appear normal. It looks like somebody's been kind of messing with it. So anyway, what we need to do here is pull this caliper and caliper bracket off. Then we can slide the rotor off of the hub. Then we can drive the stud out of the hub and then we can drive the new stud in the hub. It's a fairly straightforward process. Okay, coming around the back side here, what we're going to do is and i think i've got the space for it we're just going to pull the caliper bracket bolts off of the axle and just leave the caliper on its bracket that's less components uh, to remove and install get that guy around the other way here reverse please there we go okay so let's see if this is going to work out for me or not it's not i don't have the space for this kind of stuff uh -oh. manual tool or Hear me out, or we can use a, where is it, um, low profile socket. Where's my, oh, you know what, I moved him, I moved him over here. Silly rabbit, there it is, 18 super shallow low pro socket. And just in case, I'll bring the ratchet and wrench with me, because that's super low pro. Now, does it fit? Look at that, would y'all look at that, it fits. There it is. All right, pull this guy out. Almost. Then the bottom one. I'll reach around the corner here. Slip that guy in. Unclickage. There we go. See how you can potentially unthread your ratchet and get it stuck? See that right there? If I go out too far and I run out of space, you could unthread your fastener to a point where it's jammed in and can't be removed. You have to cut something apart. And that's not okay. I can go there. So now we pull the caliper out. The pads are going to stay in the bracket, like so. Ooh, pads are getting a little low back here. See that one? Look at that. Okay. Might want to do a brake job on this thing in the near future. Ah, look here. The rotors have never been removed. See those little clips right there? Those clips are installed on the assembly line when the chassis does not have a body on it. When that chassis is going down the line, you'll find that, uh, or during that process, they're often inverted and turned over and flipped around. And so when they put the brake rotors on there, they put those little clips over the studs to prevent the rotors from falling off during that process uh, as the chassis are moving through, or the frames rather, are moving through the uh, assembly line process. Anyway, what we need to do is get a pair of side cuts, grab a hold of these, break them off, discard them, and then the rotor is free. Okay, coming in with some side cutters here. We just pinch one of those little tabs, apply some leverage, break the little connector, throw the piece on the ground, and that is that. 
I don't know why there's three of these on this unit. I guess they had problems with them falling off on the factory floor. There. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What is that? Did you see that? That was not okay. Um, that is a problem. That's a big problem. What? What? No way. All right, so either this is the wrong stud or, well, how could that be the wrong stud? Those clips, I'm confused. I'm a little confused here. Um, cut. Yeah, I'm not sure how that happened and how this got wallowed out like that, but it did. How are the other ones? Those are good, that one's good. That's the broken one, but this confuses me because this looks like the factory stud. But how would, why would it do that? And how? I'm, I'm, I'm very confused at this. Uh, yeah, because if this is not the factory stud, then that means that this is the wrong size stud. But if it's the wrong size, then how did it get in there? Because we just took that rotor off for what would appear to be the first time ever because of little clip things. Unless someone put clips back on it somehow. Okay, well, we have a new stud here. Two of them actually, I always order these in twos just in case. Uh, you can damage the threads pulling them in or if you get the splines misaligned, uh, you can over torque it and stretch it and, and break it. So just to mitigate the risk of having to order these twice, uh, I just ordered two of them from the get go. And it appears I'm probably gonna need two of them. Okay, so this thing, that actually fits fairly well in those splines. See the little splines inside of the hole right there? That kind of does fit, but I don't understand how this occurred. Slightly confused. Anyway, let me get this thing pulled into position. We're gonna see if it's gonna, gonna spline up the way that it should into this hub and then we'll knock this one out and install the second one. I need to go fetch the stud pulling tool. Did, what? I didn't realize you were coming my way. Here you go. Thank you, coffee. Right. coffee. Thank you. I, hey, hope it, oh. I, I hope it's not yesterday's coffee. Mm. Does it look fresh? No, nah, I'm afraid. I'm gonna find okay. out. I'm gonna drink it and see what happens. <laughs> yeah, it's yesterday's it's coffee. It's fine. Okay, good. It's fine. Anyway, I'm coming over here for this guy. This is a wheel stud puller device. Uh, it's basically a conical shape designed to fit the acorn shape of the lug nut and on the back side of it there's a bearing plate in there so this thing will allow or this will allow the stud to turn freely with minimal friction against the bearing plate in order to draw that stud into the wheel hub so now that i have that and since we're over here let me turn this machine on real quick we're doing a trans fluid exchange on this unit so we have dark fluid and the original dark fluid. We're now processing, we're sending in brand new, brand new fluid and it is displacing the dark old fluid. It's a 16 Silverado, 40,000 on the tram. We have to let the machine hang out on the truck and idle for a little while while the cleaner runs through the trans and, uh, and cleans it. Okay, so now what we do here, stick this little bearing business. Actually, we're gonna get some lubricant on it. We have some uh, some anti-seize high temp copper formula thread lubricant. It says thread lubricant, that should be sufficient for the purposes here. I'm not a huge fan of lubricating wheel lug nut threads because you're not supposed to do that. It messes with the applied torque and clamping force values. So you'll notice I have two shiny new acorn style lug nuts here, right? I'm not going to use those to pull the stud through. I'm going to use one of the older ones. That way, if we strip one or break one, I do not have to uh, ruin a brand new one. We can ruin an old one and then replace it with a brand new one and that will just look much more better. -er. 
There we go. Okay. So now we're just going to take the little impact here and hit that lug nut, and that's going to draw the stud into the wheel hub. Theoretically, that's what it should do. Let's see if the 3 8 gun is going to do it. Do we have the power? Back the gun off. Beautiful, look at that. She's in and it's not coming back out. I don't know what that was about. I'm very confused at that, uh, that wobbly stud situation. Wipe the lube off. Yeah, it must that must be the wrong one and somebody put those clips back or something. I'm I don't understand. Does anybody know how that happened? Anybody? I don't know. Anyway, let's go grab a linear impact driver here and knock this stud out and then we'll repeat procedure with the second unit. Okay, it's hammer time. Back to the Silverado to check on the trans service. And we'll grab the hammer while we're there. How we doing transmission? We are done. Look at that there. Pressure differential on the high side versus, or the used side versus the old side. Close that off. That's our new fluid condition. Went from black to red. Beautiful. Here, what I'll do, we'll go ahead and shut this down now. Engine's been running. It uses the transmission's pump to exchange the fluid. The machine doesn't have its own pump. Anyway, we need a hammer. Let's grab one. How about I choose this one? It's got good, like, zombie fighting feel to it. You know, good swing to that unit. Okay, so what we gotta do here, huh? Let's give it a couple love taps. And of course, recover your pieces that are stuck behind. Because if you leave them in there, that's gonna be a problem. I have seen it happen. Come here, piece. There we go, that's our broken one. Get rid of you. So now, we'll take our new unit, feed it through the hole. Come here. Oh, well, oh man, I, oh, that was a heart attack. That's not the new one, that's the one that didn't fit. I can't believe I just did that. I'm sure you guys saw it before I did. Dun, dun, dun. Epic fail. Okay, let's try this again with the, the correct part. Is that gonna fit? Yeah. Whew. Calm down, Ray. Got the heart beating with that one. I was like, oh, and now we're into it for an axle. That's cute. Pull that through. Good. Lubricating compound. If you try to do this dry, it can gall up the threads. And they usually work, but what happens is the nut will be super grippy on the threads forever and ever, and eventually it'll wear it out. There we go. Uh, that one. Or they strip and break off. Let's see this guy go in here next. Would you look at that? Beautiful. That's how it's done. All right, guys. I think that's going to end it for this uh, this short video on pulling wheel studs. We can all figure out the remainder of this uh, procedure here. Throw the brake rotor back on, throw the caliper back on, throw the wheel back on, and this operation is complete. Uh, I did have my darling wife unit call the guy to see if we're gonna go ahead and do something about those, uh, those brake pads right there. So having said that, uh, I'm not gonna put this thing back together just yet in case we do end up doing that. But that's the gist of it. That's what I wanted to show you in this particular video. 
Let me know what you think about this situation. And uh, I, I, I would really like to know how that hole got wallowed out or whatever the deal is with that stud. Uh, let me know your opinion on the matter in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like and subscribe button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of wheel stud. End of non-brake job. End of Jeep. End of day. End of video. End of transmission.